Hello and welcome to this video on unit rate pricing. On completion of this tutorial, you will be able to understand the various approaches to estimating, as well as being able to identify the constituents of all in unit rates. The bidding process is divided into stages. The first stage is calculating the cost to the contractor or subcontractor, and this is usually based on the cost of labour, materials and plant. This price is then converted to the bid price to be submitted to the client based on a number of factors that will be discussed later. The tender process is further demonstrated on this page. The conversion process from true commercial value to bid price is referred to as adjudication or director's adjustment. Depending on the nature and the size of a project, there are two approaches to estimating. The first being resource estimating, when prices are built up from basic principles. An alternative approach to resource estimating is operational estimating. For this, the project is divided into operations and pricing the operations is based upon how the contractor will actually carry out the work. Operational estimating is widely used in civil engineering work due to the scale and size of civil engineering projects. In addition, civil engineering tender documents allow the contractor to determine how the works will be carried out with the use of method related charges. The operational approach is further illustrated on the slide. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will be concentrating on resource based estimating. During the past 20 years or so, main contractors have increasingly subcontracted trades to specialist subcontractors. The main contractor receives a quote from a subcontractor and adds a percentage to cover their profit and overheads. For a main contractor, subcontracting makes a lot of sense as it means they can reduce the number of directly employed operatives and therefore their overheads. There are however disadvantages. The main one being that good subcontractors may not be available when required, as well as potential problems with coordination and health and safety issues. As a main contractor, great care must be exercised when carrying out due diligence on subcontractors' quotations, being careful to ensure that the subcontractor has fully complied with their obligations to the main contractor. This aspect will be discussed in another tutorial. So let's have a closer look at resource-based estimating. The resources are labour, materials, mechanical plant, overheads, and of course, the all important profit. The cost of directly employed labour is based upon the wages and statutory payments made to operatives. See a separate labour rate sheet for full details. The cost of labour is referred to as an all-in rate and is based on nationally negotiated pay levels by BATJIC. BATJIC refers to the Building and Allied Trades Joint Industry Council and each year 
sits down with employers to negotiate pay levels for the coming year. In addition to this, statutory payments such as national insurance contributions and holidays with pay have to be included. Other considerations when calculating the cost of labour is locally agreed agreements. These can include incentive and productivity, pain and gain agreements, and these also have to be included in the build-up of the rates. Materials from builders merchants generally include for the following items. However, bear in mind that in a particular area or region, everyone gets their materials from a similar source. And therefore, there is a little opportunity to gain competitive advantage from this resource. On to the basic cost of materials, allowances must be made for transport and storage. A staggering amount of material is wasted, ending up in the skip. Nationally, it is thought to be around 10%. The amount of wastage will vary from firm to firm and is dependent on a number of factors discussed on the following pages. Wastage can be managed and competitive advantage gained if the following items are given attention. Firstly, avoidable waste. This covers everything from vandalism to incorrect use and storage. Many of the items listed here can be reduced or eliminated altogether by employing well-qualified staff supported by good supervision and using appropriate tools and plant. Sometimes wastage is unavoidable. For example, cutting to length and size. To accommodate this, a wastage allowance should be added to each unit rate. This allowance will vary between trades from approximately 2.5% to 7.5%. The final resource to consider is mechanical plant. This will be allowed for within unit rates as well as in the preliminaries. The main question to ask is, shall I buy a piece of plant or shall I hire it? The answer depends on how much a particular item will be used by a contractor or subcontractor. See a separate data sheet for details. So where does the information come from to price a new job? Here are a few ideas. The most accurate source of information is probably from previous projects that have been priced by yourself and have been successful. Prices can also be sourced from builders merchants online and published price books, the most popular of which is known as SPONS. When considering labour rates, the first thing to establish are labour outputs. That's to say, how many bricks can a bricklaying gang lay in one hour? Or how long does it take a plasterer to plaster one square metre of blockwork? This sort of data can be determined from historical site records. When using historical labour costs, the following factors should be taken into account, as they will impact on output levels. As mentioned earlier, the skill of the operatives and the quality of the supervision has a big impact on output, as does the general organisation of the site. Incentive or bonus schemes can be used to increase output, although care should be taken to ensure that any increases in output are not offset by incentive payments. On to the cost of resources, overhead costs need to be considered. 
and these fall into two categories. The first of which is general overheads, such as rent, rate, and head office costs. Each contract must contribute a percentage to overhead or establishment costs. And this is calculated as a percentage of previous year's turnover. Based on a turnover of £20 million a year and fixed costs of £1.6 million, in this case the general overhead percentage is 8%. If these costs are to be recovered, this percentage must be added to the basic cost of resources. In addition to general overheads, project specific overheads also need to be considered. These items are usually priced in the preliminary section of the bill of quantities or work package. Here are some typical project overhead items. These costs apply to the project as a whole, but cannot be included in work section rates. A further video on pricing preliminaries is included elsewhere. And now to the all important profit or margin. UK construction profit margins are generally low when compared to the amount of risk involved. Major top 10 contractors often operate on paper thin margins and huge overdrafts. Earlier, I mentioned tender adjudication or as it's sometimes known, director's adjustment. Now let's have a closer look at this. Tender adjudication, director's adjustment or settlement comes in two stages. Firstly, reviewing the actual commercial cost to the contractor or subcontractor, in other words, the resources, and then adding a percentage to cover general overheads and profit. Tender adjudication is all about assessing risk over a number of key areas, for example, the design complexity of a project and the quality of the information available to the contractor or subcontractor. Market conditions play a major part in assessing the profit margin. When work is plentiful, margins tend to rise, and when work is scarce and competition is fierce, then margins tend to fall in order to win work and keep operatives in a job. Further factors are listed here, including special contractual obligations imposed by the employer. Not an easy thing to assess in terms of impact on profit margins. Having taken these factors into account, the markup or profit margin is determined. This amount is added to the true commercial cost and overhead costs to give a bid price. And finally, just a quick word about e-tendering. On the face of it, bid preparation and submission is ideally suited to electronic systems. But for reasons that are not really understood, the uptake has been poor and the industry still seems to favour paper-based systems. Now, before moving on to the next video, have a go at doing these self-assessment questions.
Here are some of the other video tutorials available in this program.